want good energy. I don't want good vibes. I needed faith. Faith is the substance. Faith is what does it. By faith, kingdoms were rocked. By faith, nations were destroyed. By faith, women's wombs that were shut up began to give birth and open up. By faith, the Red Sea was split in Hebrews. By faith, land was possessed and nations were possessed. By faith, I don't want fear. I want faith. So the first thing that I want to say is, in, now like I said, Pastor has the last two weeks gone through, I don't know how many points, has, has anyone been here the last two weeks? How many points has he gotten through? Probably six or seven points on this. And uh, he was like going over, you know, I was going over notes with him, like, which one should I do? And he's got like 50 points. I'm like, honey, this is, we're going to be in the series till next summer. So maybe we should just hone it up. So I'm just going to do a couple of points uh, today and we're going to have some fun. Amen. Amen. So number one, something that I've learned about your calling is your call will align your convictions. Your call will align your convictions. There is a girl in our church a couple of years ago, her name was Corey, and she's an incredible track runner. She was like, wanted to go to the Olympics. This was something that she was called to do. It was, it was very evident. She had a gift, athletic gift, and she was a track runner. And, and she, she would use her faith in this. She, she's been a light to this community. She's written books. Uh, about about this and just being disciplined and about just your faith and ath- being an athlete and all these things. She's an incredible girl. Her name's Corey. And she, every single day she would work out and she was on a certain diet and she was timing herself in sprints that she would do. And she was making sure that she had a good coach and she was always on the field hours and hours. She would like go for it, conditioning and exercising and making sure she was ready. And she, she came to me one week. She goes, Christy, I'm not going to be able to come to this church anymore. I want to go to the Olympics. I was like, that's incredible. She goes, I, there's a coach that's an Olympic coach that's in Austin, Texas. And so I'm going to be moving and I'm going to go get coached and I'm going to get better. I'm going to go to the Olympics. See, this is what I found, that your call will align your convictions. Yeah. I should know almost what you're called to do because your convictions are so clear. Your convictions are so evident that I know what you're called to do. If you want to be a pastor, you should get an internship. You should get, start getting discipled. You should start go, getting hands-on training. You should start getting my husband. He, he went through an internship, hands-on training. Then he also went to school, and he got his, his schooling to be that. If you want to be a pastor, get around people that are there. Get, come during the week. Be part of what God is doing. If you want to be a missionary... You don't have to wait to go to another country to be a missionary. Los Angeles is a place with hurting and broken people. Come to the outreaches that we have every single week. Start giving out. If that's what you want to do, your your call will align your convictions. If you're an artist and you want to be a singer and you want to do, start, well, how are you stewarding that gift? How Go pick up an instrument. Go buy one. Save up some money. Go get some some, some lessons. Maybe, maybe help start growing in your voice. See, Deanna, I would know that she's, even if she never sang on this stage, there were years that she would get these CDs. And I, I forgot this guy. He was a ma- Brett Manning. And she, she was hours and hours putting on this CD. And all Deanna would do is continue to craft and, and, and hone this gift and this voice. And everyone thinks she sings like an angel. In fact, she can make money be doing this because she's always uh, giving voice lessons to people because she's so trained. This came because your call will align your convictions. Are you, are you hearing me today? Are you all catching this? I, I could see her life without her telling me she, she wants to sing. And this is part of her call because of how she lived her life. If you don't know you're a victor, you'll live like a victim. If you don't know you're chosen, you will let anyone choose you. If you don't know you have value, you will let anyone put a price tag on you. Come on, if you don't know it, you have to know who you are. A convictionless person is a person that doesn't know what they're called to do. If you're a princess, well, if you don't know you're a princess, you won't look for a prince. You'll look for anyone that will love you, say yes to you. (laughs) <laughs> you guys are alive and well today. Y'all, let me talk to you girls. Girls, be the fruit on the tree 
that a man has to go out of his way to find instead of the fruit on the ground that everyone can get to. Come on, girls. We need, we need a man that's going to put your interests above his own, respects you, trusts. I mean, I want, I, if you're a peasant, you, you will not look for somebody like that. That's what you think you are. So if I am, if I'm a princess, if I'm a queen, I'm looking, I'm living, I, I'm walking with some different conviction. Y'all get what I'm saying? This is, this is so important that we understand what we are called to be and who we're called to, what we're called to do so we can walk like it. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 29, 18 says this, without vision, the people perish. Without vision, without, without knowing, having a picture, without getting a word from God, we are wandering aimlessly. We're just kind of wasting time. We're just, we're just wandering around. If we don't have a vision, we're going to just stay depressed and we're going to stay anxious and we're going to stay in idol if we don't have a vision. We have to get a picture. We have to get a vision of what... If you don't have a vision of getting married, then you're going to stay single. If you don't have a vision of having a family and having children, it won't materialize. If you don't have a vision of what God wants to do in your life, you're going to stay in idol in the same position you've been in for years and years and years. How do you find that? God, chase after God. I thought there was something deeper, Christine. Was there something deeper? Chase after God. Don't chase after the call. Chase after God, and the call will find you. I'll say that again. Chase the God of the call, and the call will find you. Go after God. Serve the house of God. Serve. You go, serving really does it? Yes. Serving has stirred up all the gifts that I have in my life. Anybody I have found that, that found they, what they were called to do, they didn't really know. We don't all know. We're just starting to say yes to God in whatever small area we can. Yes to whatever it is. I'm going to be faithful with the little things. It's, it's in my yes. It, it may not look like the big picture. I just want to say yes. And all of a sudden, God stirs these gifts. In fact, Jeremy and I are here because of that. When he's a teenager... He, he, he went to, uh, uh, he, was, he was a kid in youth ministry, and he, he started just serving. He was a teenager. He just, he loved the youth, and they, all of a sudden, God started stirring his heart. He loved, like, doing this, and he wanted to help people, and he started a skate park ministry called Intense, and he had all the, his dad would build all these huge skate parks and skate, you know, board, what do you call them, you know? Yes, ramps. I'm not a skateboard. And, and, and they, they would build all these ramps, and then he, all these unsaved would come, and somebody would speak, and people would get saved. And he decided, I'm going to be an intern. I want to go into ministry. And, and he went into ministry, and he became, and, and I'm just telling you, came not from his ability, but from his availability. He just said, yes, I'm available, God. Use me, God. Use me in whatever way you want to. I just want, and, and God, as you chase after him and say yes to him, he will start giving you. Now, the prophetic is great. There, there, there's those few and far between moments you're waiting for that one person to prophesy, and that's your call. You know, that happens, but there's not maybe two or three in this whole room will get your call like that. In fact, you might get a, the wrong prophecy. My sister got prophesied to that she was supposed to be a worship leader, and she's tone deaf. She's tone deaf, guys. Don't let her lead worship. She can't sing. So we don't want to just go off of, I'm waiting for a prophecy, all of heaven, lightning strikes, and poof, there he is on my mantle. And he, Thus saith the Lord Tyrone, yours, you know, it's, this is what I'm called to, and, 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 and we think it's this, you know, the smoke has filled our living room, but it may just be the simplicity of chasing after God, and just in my simple, yes, I want to come. Start out, outreaching, giving out food, washing cars. I'm going to come to X18. I want to serve. I want to put out whatever. We don't have to put out chairs anymore. But, you know, whatever it may be. And God will use that. You know, vision gives purpose to pain. I found that vision gives purpose to pain. This is not an easy life. Huh? Amen? This, is, this, is, this life is not perfect. It's hard. And so to get through it, 
Vision gives purpose to the pain. Now, I have three children. I've gone through three pregnancies, actually four. One's in heaven. And, and, and those pregnancies were not always easy. There was a lot of pain. There was a lot of discomfort. There was a lot of aches. Any women have been pregnant anymore can testify with me. It, it is not always fun. You're going to have sleepless nights. But the pain didn't stop me from wanting to have this baby. The pain and discomfort that I was feeling didn't, didn't stop me or make me want to abort the process because I knew what was on the other side was far greater than what I was walking through in the moment. Because I had a vision of a baby girl in my arms, I could endure the pain of a miscarriage. Because I had a vision of marrying someone that would be a partner with me in ministry and we would do this together, I could endure the pain of failed relationships that weren't right. Because I have a vision of Los Angeles and Orange County being turned upside down for Jesus. I can endure the challenges and pressures that come in ministry because I have a vision for this city that's bigger than the pressure and the struggle that I'm in right now. Vision. Because the joy set before Jesus, he could endure the cross. He goes, it wasn't about the suffering. I was going to hurt. I was going to suffer. I was going to get whipped and beaten. But it wasn't about that. It was about having an unhindered, unrestricted relationship with my sons and daughters so I could endure that. The joy, the vision he had on the other side helped him endure the pain. Your call will align your convictions. Amen. Amen. Number two, let faith, not fear, decide your future. Fear says I'll never find someone. Faith says God has the right person for me. Fear says, but what if I write the book and it doesn't sell? Faith says, what if it does sell? Fear says, what if I never have children? Faith says, I will have children. Fear says, I don't know if I should start that business because I'll go broke. Faith says, what if I don't go broke? Fear says, what if I fail? Faith says, what if I succeed? What if I take a risk and it's not worth it? But what if it is worth it? What if I audition and don't make the cut? But what if you do make it? What if I pray for them and they don't get healed? But what if they do get healed? What if I tell them about Jesus they don't receive him? But what if they do receive him? I need some faith, not fear. I want faith. Faith is the currency of heaven. Fear is the currency of hell. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It is the substance. It is the spiritual currency of the kingdom of God. You cannot buy spiritual things. You cannot buy power and blessings with money, though some have tried, but faith is how you obtain the things of God. Whew. Faith is how you, how you obtain, hold on to those things. Faith is not hoping. Hoping is wishing for what you want with no assurance or belief that it will really happen. I hope, my kids hope that they'll get certain Christmas presents. They, they've told me about them, they wanna get a puppy. They're hoping that they're gonna, there's no assurance or belief that, that you're gonna get it. I hope that I get a raise, I hope that I get that, I hope that I, my kids straighten up, I hope that my marriage works out, you know, and I hope you do well at that, good luck, you know positive energy to you, positive vibes. The other day I was like, thank you for that luck, but the luck won't help. She's a close friend. I was like, no, 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 she's not that close. Actually, my close friends would say something different, but she was like, good luck. And I was like, no, 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 laugh out loud. Luck won't do anything. I need you to have faith with me. I need you to have some faith. I don't want luck. I don't want good energy. I don't want good vibes. I need faith. Faith is the substance. Faith is what does it. By faith. Kingdoms were rocked. By faith, nations were destroyed. By faith, women's wombs that were shut up began to give birth and open up. By faith, the Red Sea was split in Hebrews. By faith, land was possessed and nations were possessed. By faith, I don't want fear. I want faith. Come on, give God praise. I need faith. Does anyone have a $5 bill, $10 bill, $20 bill, um, something like that? We're all broke. Gas is too high. Inflation has hit us. All right, I'm keeping this. Thank you so much, Tyron. Um, so I don't want this, but I want some food with this. Th 
This is um, a, a currency right now we can use for anything, right? And it's not what I want, but it's the substance of things that I hope for. I want to go to In-N-Out. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching now. I want a number two, the cheese. Uh, yeah, so I want fries lie. I want it with onions, the hamburger. I want, I want a shake with vanilla and strawberry combined. If you haven't had it, go have it. I want a lemonade. I want that whole thing. It is, yeah, I want the whole thing, girls. This is, now, I, I can't eat this, but I can trade this and get something that I, I can eat. Um, I, I, this, is, this is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I can turn this in in the window when I get up, and I can trade this in, and I can get food instead of this. That makes sense. So, so just as money is like this on the earthly realm, so is our faith in the spiritual realm. I can't buy joy. I can't buy peace. I can't buy healing. I can't buy freedom. I can't buy breakthrough. But guess what? Faith is the spiritual currency in exchange for my miracle. By faith, I can exchange my faith for my healing. I can exchange my faith for something greater in the heavens. This is what pulls it down is faith. Faith is the substance, the substance, the spiritual, the heavenly exchange for my breakthrough. That's what faith is. You can turn it in, you'll begin to get see supernatural. I want to see the super, I want to see faith, 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 faith. I believe you at your word, God. I be, I, I'm not looking at the scene. I'm looking, I'm looking at what your word said, what, what you've spoken to me, my rhema, the logos word. These are all things that God speaks. He's maybe even spoke through wise counsel to you. God, God, I'm going to have faith in your word. I'm not going to doubt it because those that doubt God uh, are even pleasing to you. God, I, I hold on to my faith. And this is what, what God says about your faith. It is impossible to please God, but it also says this, Romans 12, 3. For I say through grace given to me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but think soberly according to as God has dealt every man the measure of faith. Faith is given to all of us. God says it is not just faith given to me, not just given to your pastors, it is not just given to leaders, but it's given to those that are rich, poor, young, old, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, every culture, every race. He's given to you. Uh, don't say, I don't have enough faith to get to my destiny. No, no, he's given you a measure of faith. Amen. Um, I want a guy named Jackson. I don't know you personally. Jackson, is that Jackson? Come on up. Run up. Yeah. Give it up for Jackson. We heard you're like kind of muscular, so come on up. At least I was told. You could show off your, no, she said. Come on up, Jackson. Okay. Don't, don't die on me here. We have insurance, so, okay, Jackson. Okay, flex words, no, that's <laughs> way. Okay, so, if you look at me and Jackson, obviously you can tell he is bigger, his muscles are bigger than me, right? Yes, if we were to put money on a, a wrestling, arm wrestling match, who would you put it on? Me, no. <laughs> yeah, he just had soldier, shoulder surgery, so let's do it. Let's do it. Um, so, the fact of the matter is, Jackson, I don't know if you know this, but you don't have one more muscle in your body than I do. Now, we might have a different structure in our body. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a girl and you're a guy, but this, the fact of the matter is, he doesn't have one more. We have the same amount of muscles in our body. We have over 600 in both of our bodies. The only difference is why he has some muscle tone is because his muscles have carried some weight. So when your muscles, when your faith carries weight, it begins to grow. And your faith will begin to swell to the place that you need to when you hit a problem. So we have the same amount of blood, we have the same amount of muscle, we have the same amount of opportunity, we have the same amount of faith, but guess what? It's what we do with what we have been given to us. Y'all catching this today? When you begin to run in,
in at the task, the problem, the hardship, the struggle, when you begin to run in and not run away, that's when your faith begins to grow. And that w- that's when it begins to swell. See, the fact is, me and Jeremy are not strong and we have so much faith. The only reason you might see that we have a lot of faith is we've been doing this for eight years and there's been a lot of times we wanted to give up and we want to just say whatever and we're going to throw in the towel. We're not doing this anymore. But we rushed in. We chose at the end of the moment to rush in and say, God, I have faith that you're going to give us a building. God, I have faith that you're going to fill this room. God, I have faith that you're going to take care of this. God, I have faith during the pandemic that you're going to make way with provision. And guess what? My faith has swelled and grown. Thank you. Thank you, Jackson. Thank you. Awesome. Give it up for Jackson. We pray for your shoulder. In Jesus' name, him. Faith is foundation. It's a foundation for our Christian walk with God. You could come to church, get a word from God. You could, you could cry. You could have goosebumps all over your body. You could sweat. But if you don't have faith, you will not be able to take hold of what God is, because it's big. What he wants you to do with your life is big. It's gonna take great faith to do it. This is not for just some people in this room. This is for all of us, because some of us are looking at other people going, why didn't God do that for me? They're walking in it and they're seeing it happen. God said, faith has to be activated. The greatest thing the enemy is after is our faith. The enemy's trying to take my house. The enemy's trying to take my husband. The enemy's trying to take my wife. The enemy's trying to take my flat iron. The enemy's trying to take my car. No, the enemy doesn't want your car. What is he going to do with your car? The reason he is attacking you is he wants to attack your faith. But guess what? If we're in cancel culture, we might as well cancel something that's bigger than all of them. Let's cancel some fear today and let's it. Come on, anyone ready to cancel some fear? The lies of fear. The words of fear, the things that said you can't do it, you can't make it, you'll never succeed. I'm canceling it today. Come on, faith. Your faith moves God. Your faith shakes heaven. Your faith rebukes the devil. Your faith heals diseases. Your faith gives you courage. Your faith empowers you to forgive. Your faith gives you confidence. Your faith reaches into the spirit. Your faith snatches the promises of God. Your faith embraces the word. Faith says keep going even when you want to quit. Faith says keep dreaming even though the dream looks dead. Faith releases impossibilities. Faith says I will stand even if I'm alone. It wasn't fear. Fear Fear hasn't done anything for me, so why do we keep entertaining it? Let's just begin to lose. Come on, anyone have faith in this place? Come on, anyone have faith? You're going no more fear this year. 2021, I'm letting it go. It's an eviction notice on fear. You can't tell me what I'm going to do with my life anymore. You can't paralyze me anymore. I'm putting a line in the sand today. Oh, when you turn on the news, it's just feeding you from every direction. I just challenge you to turn off social media, turn off the news, turn off all of it. Turn on the Holy Spirit. Say, God, I need your faith. I need your faith. Of course, we're in fear. Everything that, that's been downloaded to us is just full of fear. Even the, what is that, that snail uh, show? It's not snail. What, uh, no. Huh? No, it's the squid. Squid, it's not snail. Oh my gosh, Christians in this room told me to watch it. I'm like, are you Christian? Come on, somebody. I want to name names. No, I can't. Me and Jeremy, are, this is not part of my, we're just laying in bed. We're like, let's just let's watch Squid. Dear God, nobody warned us. There's like people being, it's just bloody and gory. And we wonder why we're so anxious. We wonder why we're so fearful. Come on, let's check yourself. Just take some inventory over. I I said, honey, can you just put on something happy? Like, can you put on Barney or something that like helps me laugh or something? You know, I just need a comedian right now. He's like, yeah, me too. I feel like I need to take a shower. We're like both like, oh my gosh. It is crazy. It's just, we've got to take inventory of those things. But faith, not fear. It's a choice. God's not going to come, force you into faith. And there's not, 
one person under here not under severe attack against the enemy. I mean, he's been plotting against our life since we were in our mother's womb. So we're all here in the same place together. And the only way you'll get through this is, is by faith. I need my faith, the strongest, when my fear is the loudest. My fear has a microphone all the time. And it doesn't care when it uses it. I was pregnant with Arrow. Fear would say, you're never gonna, you're gonna not make it through the delivery. Your baby's gonna die. You're gonna have preeclampsia. What if, what if you have complications? The whole time, I mean, I would be in the car driving and I would hear, what if you die right now? You just die, what would, what would happen to your family? What would happen to Jeremy and the kids? And I would have so many, even the other night, I was overhearing Brave um, say, I don't want to die, Daddy. I don't want to die. And he had all these fears. The enemy was speaking to him constantly about him dying, about how he's going to die, and all these, these things. My little boy, Brave, was experiencing. And he's going, no, no, you're not going to die. God has a plan for you and all those things. But I just found that, that, that fear, it's, it's, we're all in this battle together. We're all under this attack together. And this is, this is why the Bible says don't neglect the meeting together of the saints and the assembling of the saints together. Because when you get in this atmosphere of faith, all of a sudden, and you come under one name and you come into agreement with the truth and you come out of agreement with lies, there's a divine reversal that happens where fear is exchanged for faith. You can't do this alone. You can't journey this alone. You can't isolate yourself. And you won't be able to make it. When there's thousands of armies of fear coming against you, how are you going to make it when you're alone by yourself and you have one sword in your hand? You're going to die. God says, I want you to have a whole army of people with you so that when, when they come against you, you have people with the swords in their hand. You have a shield of faith in your hand. And fear tries to take you out. But no, my faith is stronger and my faith is strengthened because I'm not going to die here. I'm getting through it because I have an army of people with me. I have an army of people with me. Matthew 17, 20 says, Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there. And it will move. Somebody say move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So if faith moves mountains, fear creates them. Maybe fear has created the mountains that are in front of you. But the good thing is faith destroys and moves the mountains that you have created with your fears. Come on. Rise up, men and women of God. It's okay, there's some mountains right now. How you push through these, God, God I believe. It doesn't look good right now, but God, I, I believe. I believe what you said. I know, I know, God, I'm sick in my body, but God, I believe you're gonna do it. I, I have faith, God. I'm not hoping that hopefully it will happen. No, that, that's not what he's saying. He's saying, I want you to have the assurance, the evidence of things. Uh, you have the substance called faith. It moves the mountains. And number three, y'all ready? This is the last one and we're done. Number three says this. I want things I've learned. So protect your yes for God. And you know what, Jesse, you can come up. Protect your yes for God, not from God. Not from God. What does this look like to protect your yes for God? Is it easy? Is it kind of like, oh, this is easy to be a Christian, you know? Or is it like pretty gnarly? What, what God says that you, you have to do to, to be a follower of Jesus. Not just like say the prayer. We've, we, most of us in this room have done so. Receive Jesus in our heart. But you want to be a true follower of Jesus. Meaning you want to follow after him. People know you are a follower of Jesus without you announcing it. Without you picketing with your, I'm a Christian and you're going to hell. No, no. We, people know. Not because you put it on your bio. You know. It, it's because they know by just... Your life, your follower. How many say, I want to be a follower? I want people to know I'm a follower. Okay, so we got the right crowd. This scripture, I want us to see what this means because when I say this, it's not going to be like, yay, that sounds fun. It sounds really hard. But the yes is worth it. Let me tell you. Matthew 16, 24 says this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple, not Christian, who wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. 
So forever, forever, whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Whoever wants to be my disciple must, one, deny themselves, two, take up their cross, three, you can follow Jesus. This is a follower of Jesus at this point. So he's going, there's some steps to be a follower. You can't get to third grade without going to first grade, without going to second grade. They don't just put you in third grade. He goes, I want you to first deny yourself. So deny self, deny self. Can you put that up? What's in caps? Deny, not take up your cross yet. We're gonna just do deny, not take up your cross yet, not following God. Yes, deny yourself because you can't do, see, we, we try to get to the bottom and we haven't done these two things. You can't, you can't be a follower of Christ w- without doing this. He goes, deny self. Now I looked up deny. Deny means the state that one refuses to admit the existence of. So I want you to review, refuse the existence of yourself, selfishness. Refuse the existence of your flesh. I mean, in a world that there is self all over the place, we got selfies, we got the triple filters, we got the right angles, we got booty filters, we got bicep filters, we got all the filters. I mean, we got, we got pictures of everything of ourselves. It is so, and what, what you feel, do what you feel. Do you, do you, boo, you know, you do you, you know. Like, no, you don't do you. You do God's way. This is not God's way. It's you do what you feel, how you want to do it. Follow your heart. Don't follow your heart. Run. We're selfish. Self says, I don't want to give. Self says, I don't want to go to church. Self says, I don't want to give my tithes. Self says, I don't want to sacrifice. Self says, I don't want to be inconvenienced. Self says, I don't want to be uncomfortable. Self says, I don't want to go out of my way. Self says these things, but that's not of God. You cannot say, I want the call of God, yet embrace yourself. God says, guess what? You can't have your cake and eat it too. You've got to choose. If you want to go after God, I have to deny myself yes to God yes to your way yes to your will yes to giving yes to serving yes to loving yes to going after you yes to whatever you ask me to do God this is my yes to you denying selfishness in my flesh that wants to rear up and do what I feel is best for me no don't do what's best for you do what God thinks is best for you. Do y'all get the difference? It's so easy to get it, get it twisted. I've done it. This is best for me, so this is, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the course. And, but, but what if that's not God? We, 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 we don't always know it all, guys. We, 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 we have the God of the universe. He says, my ways are higher than, than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. We've got to submit that. Go, God, I'm going to die, deny myself. Take up my cross. Okay, the crucifixion was death, right? We're killing our flesh. God, we're, we're taking up, we're killing our flesh and we're going, he suffered, right? The cross represents suffering, hardship. No matter God, if it takes suffering, if I'm gonna go through persecution, go through people mocking me, saying you shouldn't do that. People, people did this with, with Jeremy. Like, You're gonna start a church in Los Angeles and downtown, the dirtiest, grossest place. Well, yeah, wouldn't that be the perfect place to bring Jesus is to the darkest area in the city. I, I, this, of course we're going there. This is where Jesus told us we're going to go to all the best light, the best, the richest people. We're going to go to this. No, no, no. We just said, God, if, where do you want us to go? He said here. And so we're going to go and it's sometimes going to take some sacrifice. It's not going to be easy, but, but we're saying yes to your call. Because one day when I see Jesus, I don't want to just say I lived a good life say, God, you, well done, done, you did it, well done, he's saying, I want you, there's something you have to walk out, well done, good and faithful servant, take up your cross and follow me, follow me, man, you can come up, these are some men and women in the Bible that protected their yes for God, Noah said yes when God asked him to build the ark, Abraham said yes when God asked him to sacrifice his only son. 
Joseph said yes when God asked him to forgive his brothers who beat him and sold him into slavery. Moses said yes when God told him to go to Pharaoh and ask him to let the Israelites go. Rahab said yes when asked to hide the Israelite spies and risk her own life and the lives of her family. David said yes when God asked him to fight the giant Goliath with only a slingshot and a few stones. Esther said yes when Mordecai told her to go to the king to save her people. Daniel said yes when God told him not to bow down and worship other idols. Mary said yes when the angel told her she would carry God's son, Jesus. The disciples said yes when Jesus asked them to leave everything behind and follow him. And Paul said yes when God asked him to deliver the good news of Jesus to the Gentiles. So yes, this is what I want you to remember in yes. Yield, expect, surrender. I want you to write this down for yes. I got a cool acronym so you could just soar with this in your life. Yield, yield, everyone say yield. Okay, and I'm done right here, I promise. Yield, be prepared to meet God on his terms. Yield, I'm yielding my life, I'm preparing. I'm preparing, you know, I'm preparing for that moment. I can't wait for that moment that God calls me out to prepare. I need to prepare. This is going on your, your call well line, your conviction. It's kind of the same idea. You're preparing. My, my little boy, Braven and Lyric, are in basketball. They can't sit home to condition and get better for basketball. So they go to the gym, the YMCA. They're always training. They're getting ready. We even Marcus, is he here? He started getting with Marcus, one of our uh, guys that's in our church, but he's incredible at basketball and he trains the kids. But this is, they're, he's, they're training and they're preparing for that game. So God says, I want you to prepare. Noah couldn't wait for his raining to, to start building an ark. He had to build the ark when there was no rain. He's preparing. So yield, expect. Everyone say expect. So be listening for God's voice. Expect it. Expect it. This morning I was, uh, I was screaming at the kids. I was like, come brave, come Lyric, come brave, come. And maybe about 20 times, 25 times after that, they came. They go, did you not hear me? And they go, no. I'm like, no, no. It wasn't that you didn't hear me. You just weren't listening. Start listening. They weren't expecting to hear my voice. And so God's going, I want you to expect but if there's too much noise, got to go. You know, Elijah, when he was praying for rain, he put his head between his knees, the Bible says. I don't think that's weird. I think that's funny that they put that in there. They want to make sure he blocked out. He put his head between his knees when he prayed. It's like he blocked out all the voices and all the sounds and all the noise. And I go, God, I'm listening. I'm listening. He's speaking to you. He is speaking. But are you listening? And the third thing is surrender. Everyone say surrender. Be open to what God has to say. I surrender. I surrender. Not my will, but yours be done. But we haven't surrendered our will to him. He goes, I want you to surrender my timetables. I want you to surrender your routine, your schedule, how you want to do it, your calendar. I give it to you, God. I yield this to you. I surrender. It's in your hands. Not my way. Let your will be done. I let go of control. I let go of control. I let go of holding on. I got to surrender. It's going to be hard. Saying yes to coming and doing this church eight years ago was not easy. I was pregnant. We didn't have a, We had a double salary. We had a, all this, this huge house in Oakdale. And, and we were loving life. And then God called us. We had to leave our house. We short sold it. We, we sold things in our house. We got in a trailer. We didn't have any hope that we had any money coming in. We, we went through this, 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 this dream and this vision God gave us. We said yes to it. It was not easy, but it has been fulfilling and it has been worth it because I'm looking in front of the fruit of my yes. And it's people that have said yes to Jesus. Yes. To, come on. And it's worth it. It is fulfilling your yes. Fearless online church. Man, what an amazing day so far. Right now is an opportunity for us to give back. We've been receiving so much. I, I don't know about you, but I've been blessed from what's going on in this stream and what God is doing in this church. Proverbs 19:17 says this, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he, the Lord, will repay him for his deeds. This church is all about reaching the needs of our city and cities worldwide. In fact, last year alone, we were able to pass out 2.2 million 
pounds of food. Come on, somebody, that's a lot of food. We, we gave out food and we were able to pray for every single person. We also washed their cars, uh, pretty much the modern day uh, version of washing someone's feet. Man, what an awesome experience that we've got to have through generous givers just like you. You may not be able to be here on ground zero level, feeding people, clothing people, loving on people, but you sure can be a part of this by giving your finances and lending in a sense to the Lord. And we know that you can't outgive God. I've found over 41 years of life that no matter how much I give to the Lord, He always gives back. He gives back so much more, no matter how much I release. I really believe that the spirit of generosity is alive in our generation. We need to meet people's physical needs so they'll open their heart so God can meet their spiritual need. Would you help us do that? We wanna give out more clothing. We wanna give out more food. We wanna touch thousands more people. In fact, this year, I'm believing to give out four million pounds of food. Would you step out in faith with us? Would you become a partner today? Everything in life to get anywhere really takes partnership. Every one of us are here because of partnership. Life happens because of partnership. I have a dream that we would reach people's physical need to give them a spiritual truth. Who Jesus is, who Jesus wants to be in their life, that love that we so boldly profess as Christians. Would you pray today about your gift, whatever size, large or small, that you're gonna partner with us once a month to see God do something incredible in a city. You can sign up for Fearless Partners today. Why wait another day? Let's be generous like our God and watch that generous God while we bless others continue to fill our, our vats, our barns, our, our dream, our business, our family fuller than we ever could have ourselves. God bless you as you give today. Let me pray over your giving as I believe people are moved today to become generous and partner with the Fearless Partners. Jesus, we pray over this giving. We pray over these people that are so into this ministry. We, we say right now, God, Lord, as we lend to the poor, as we help those in need, Lord, that you would help those that are giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream as much as I did. Again, if you are new and this is your first time, text the word FEARLESS to the number down below so we can stay connected with you throughout the week. See you guys next week.